right so and uh apparently we're live um folks if you're seeing this if you are seeing this let me know uh, if you like what you see um that's uh where is my history history how we can bring this up bring this bring this bring this bring this where is it where is it where's my last screen Ver always very awkward in the youtube app to find um my own videos there uh, okay let's see okay we're seeing this live i do see all right okay so it looks like video is going i see it on uh on a youtube i see it on youtube it's it's great um let's try to see if we have anyone guys if you anyone is there um just write down i will try to also push some of the messages into one hour chats groups let's go with this one uh, youtube let's see okay hopefully we'll get a few more people um because people we need you to test sergey let's see if sergey is in air sergey say hi Okay, so now I need to check this on the other side. Well, Victor's checking some things. Yeah, as you may have noticed, it looks like it's different compared to the previous that's attempt. Really because um, the sound is actually working, but it's going through the different channel. Well, Victor's checking some things. Yeah. yeah. Can, as you may have not. Well, so all these like open source tools, they are so amazing. <laughs> so <laughs> they are so great that it's very difficult to work with them. Um, uh, let's see if we can still have Sergey here. Sergey, can you say something for me? Yeah, of course. Uh, I can talk all the evening long. Great. So we do have a few people. We do have uh, some regulars that come into uh, to, uh, to our channels. Uh, folks, let me know if um, if uh, the picture is fine. You can see everyone. Like you can see me. You can see Sergey right now. We kind of in this. Uh... <sighs> what I see the stream is for some reasons is on a weird color scheme. Um, I don't know exactly why is that. Um, but there is nothing we can already uh, we can check. So let's yeah, just continue. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Um, let's test. Um, Sergey, you can switch to your ID. Just in case we want to test it out. So let me see. Um, now people should be able to see your ID and folks. Let let us know. Like all good. Um, looks good and now we're switching to my id and uh, let us know how does it look as well um so once it's done i will probably will start recording locally as well just in case if i need to you know replace the stream after um the beauty of all this setup is that um we are uh we, we, we're trying a different technology here so we're trying to different technology we're doing uh, classic streaming setup with OBS. Uh, the previously we used a different setup, but let's see how it goes, right? Um, let me see if I be able to bring some of the comments here. All right, so comments from Naveen. Great, awesome, works. Um, hello, hello. Uh, Naveen also says, hi, Sergey. So it's also awesome. Hey, Naveen. And that's all good. Looks like looks like everything works fine. Um, and let me check. Let me check. Uh, OB, the YouTube YouTube Studio is great. 
Um, all right, so let's see how it goes. You know, um, this is why we're doing this because it is live. It is not something that, um, you know, pre-canned uh, or like every, everything is <laughs> working great and everything is rehearsed and, <laughs> and, and whatnot. All right, so I think, um, I think it's awesome. Oh, let me also do this in... Um, uh, we're going to be talking about Java, right? So we can we can we can share in some of the uh, Java related uh, chats. Um, you mean now? Yeah, I'll just like sending. Uh, I'll just do this um, in a. Okay, now, good stuff. And the last but not least, uh... and while we're sharing all this stuff, uh, maybe I should just fill the gap. So, um, uh, you... yeah, the, the reason it, it all happens is because Victor had decided that his old, old cool setup is not, you know, hipsterish enough, so he started looking for a new program that he can uh, utilize better, and now we are trying a new software, uh, which is a bit more um, complex, but also gives us more flexibility. So yeah, just stay with us. Uh, it will take a bit of preparation, but uh, eventually it will provide better results. And as you can see, we have this beautiful frame already and stuff like this, which is great. I mean, our previous stream didn't have the frame. Like, now we have the frame. You see the improvement, we're right? Doing, we're doing like we're becoming more and more uh, like uh, versed in this like world of streaming and uh, like all these like cool kids looking at us. God, like why all these old farts doing this? It's so it's so terrible. Like why are <laughs> they doing this? You know, it's one of the feelings when you have a when you're you know old folk doing something that embarrassing, but he's not embarrassed. <laughs> but you feel embarrassed. So this this this, this yeah. is something that we're trying to do here. Um, yep. Uh, Victor's sound level is too low. Oof. Um, that's possible. Let me see. Let me try to bring this up. Um, so. And when uh, when Trump, I tried. Thank you so much for uh, for this uh, this comment. Let me see. Um, let me know if it's if it's better. Um, um, and when I tried the live version, I had the feeling that your voice only goes to the left channel, uh, not st stereo. Just make sure that the, you... In the live? Uh, in the live version? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can hear you well now, but uh, when I tried the live version, I think it was just... Yeah, left headset. The same uh, I mean uh, face. Your voice in my left headset, but Sergey could be both sides. Okay, let me see. I, ch I just uh, uh, fixed that. Um, let me see if it's uh let us know if it's same if it changed something so it, it's kind of weird because i was trying to um kind of like eliminate this uh issue with um eliminate this issue with dealing with the source of lags for the sound <laughs> and uh, uh using this all the hardware but for some reasons my the obs doesn't pick in pick up my um audio interface and uh, the Sergey channel should go into one level, one one place, and Victor's should go to another. So okay, it's okay now. Okay, perfect. I think I I I fixed that. So essentially, um, you know, thank you so much for uh, being with us, and this is great that we uh, you know tweaking this technology to get. Okay. Oh come so on, let's just make a confession that we haven't prepared the episode, so we decided to fill it with technical, you know, issues. Uh, all the episode, uh, like, well, yeah, no, let's I mean, be honest. Like, I think I think <laughs> we are like in this um, in this uh, part of our professional career. At least I can say about this that I feel comfortable just going like full blown, unprepared. But like when unprepared, I'm saying it's more like, have you heard about this thing called uh, the method of uh, progressive JPEG? Um, I heard this from the Artemy Lebedev. He's uh, one of the like uh, well-known designers in Russian world, and maybe in the world as well. Hopefully, people hear heard about him. So, but he he has this method called method of uh, progressive JPEG. What's the progressive JPEG? There's a two types of JPEGs. Is that when the JPEG is loading, it can load by lines, you know, the line by line. When you see in the on the web page, 
So this is why this is how the conventional like a project management and uh, you know the software development works. So you go in line by line and like when you fully done, you're done. But uh, with progressive JPEG, you will get like full picture immediately. It would be blurry, it would be, but you still uh, can see there's something is going on there. And over the time, more details will come. So in like, you, even if it would be like 50% loaded, you can, you can see some of the details, you can see some of the uh, silhouettes and things like that. And when it's like fully loaded, like 80% loaded, you'll get the better picture, but like, with like maybe terrible quality. And when it's done, it's done. You see, there's a great detail, uh, very saturated and nice colors and so far. So I'm sorry, my, my microphone. And, uh, Do you remember this episode of Simpsons where uh, Homer was uh, trying his first computer and he connected to the internet and he was loading a picture of beautiful woman? Yeah. And it was loading from, uh, you know, uh, from the above the bottom. And uh, yeah, at, at the moment it stopped loading. I was like, ah. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, I like to see this as a our method of progressive JPEG, it's 100% works, you know, you see like stream is going and if you're running this, some of the modern browser um, that you will be able to see this in 1440p, it's like beautiful, uh, the crisp image. If you're watching on the phone, hey, that's what you get. Um, but what I look at the stream right now on uh, my iPad and it, it's not, it doesn't look terrible. Um, only one thing I forgot. I forgot to remove this uh, Skype, um, the Skype logo. This uh, this terrible Skype logo. Anyway, Sergey. <laughs> yes. Um, as you know, folks, if you first time on this channel, um, uh, I I got bored with uh, not able to go into the conferences, and I decided to find a way how I can reconnect to my audience. So over the time, over this uh, like uh, isolation pandemic, I, I developed some of the um, some of the talks that I always wanted to do, but I never had the chance to do. Um, and I turned them as kind of, okay, so let's turn the camera, let's turn the share screening, share screen, <laughs> screen sharing, <laughs> and uh, we will talk about uh, some, some cool tech. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, or maybe even like months ago, we started uh, doing uh, this together with Sergey. So one of the reasons why, because I always wanted to learn some of the cool ways of uh, modern uh, kids uh, doing, and the Sergey is slightly younger than me, and he can even teach me some some of the new modern ways. But also, apparently, during the time, Sergey also striving for uh, perfection on the pictures, perfection on technology. So we also developed some. I think we can develop pretty cool setup to do kind of like a um, collaborative live streaming with uh, when the picture doesn't suck and we don't need to use the zoom and every time. Oh, let me switch to my screen, and after that, I'm waiting until the presentation mode will be switching. So that's why I think we are in the uh, in the good shape over the time of um, you know being professional software developers and we getting very close to being like very professional streamers um, <laughs> even though um, many people stream on uh, Twitch we probably also need to try this to 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 attract more more audience but hey we're here for um, for the for the platform that we know and love so YouTube is is our favorite place so in the in the previous episodes we started looking into some of the Tipping our toes, especially myself, into more uh, reactive approach. We start uh, breaking down some of the cool, uh, cool project, and I'm switching to Sergey's screen. He has this like a GitHub op open on his screen, uh, and uh, it's a uh, it's a Liklus project where um, Liklus is a uh, open source uh, event gateway, uh, reactive, uh, and uses a lot of cool tech. And we were talking about this on the previous episodes. If you go to this channel, you'll find some of the playlist um, that says, um, what, like a crossing the streams or something like that. Yeah, where, where we kind of like doing this uh, pair program. Um, wow, I really, I really like, so sorry for being a, like a fan of my own tech, but like, I really like how, what kind of like a quality we were able to achieve with like this, um, this, this tooling. And uh, I don't, um, I don't hate it. It's it's looks really great. Thank you so much for open source technologies. Um, and today we're going to be taking a little bit different route, right? So today we're going to take a route where we're doing step back. 
and uh, we're doing, uh, we will try to drill a little bit deeper into the heart of this reactive uh, framework that uh, reactive system that Sergey developed. And um, not many, maybe people familiar with, especially I was not super familiar with this framework itself. And I started uh, dipping my toes there by implementing some of the um, reactive concepts in a project that I was working on. Um, and today we're going to be like a looking into kind of like a pair programming, uh, like uh, live commenting on someone's uh, crappy code and uh, things like that. So um, last time in my live stream on the Confluent YouTube channel, I showed, um, let me show this one, uh, okay, SQL DB Java client. SQL DB Java client. So uh, I showed this uh, Java client that allows me to interact with, uh, with key SQL DB using just like Java APIs. Um, and this actually was very cool. However, I found uh, the API is a little bit cumbersome, just uh, simply because it was developed with uh, um, maybe not with end user in, in, uh, in mind, but with more like, okay, so how this stuff can be integrated with other frameworks, right? So that's why it might give uh, too much verbosity and less opinion. And I was start thinking again, since I'm bringing uh, my own opinion here, I'm looking to this code and I start looking this, um, the ways how uh, I need to handle results, how I need to structure my queries in order to like uh, perform certain queries in order. So I, I thought that that would be great to bring some opinion here in terms of like how I would like to see my code, right? So um, uh, sounds good. Like for like everyone, does it make sense what I'm saying? In um, uh, write down in in the comments. Um, the does it even make any sense what I'm talking about? Uh, I know Naveen definitely was uh, in uh, one of the live streams that I did on Confluent channel, so he definitely should uh, have um, uh, some some ideas about this. Now, so the um, it is the the KSQL DB uh, Java client actually implements a uh, reactive streams um, specification, and it has all like uh, the DCKs and stuff like that. It has a two parts. It has a reactive server and a reactive client, and potentially the reactive server can use um, any like different uh, like clients, and they should work through this. We will we'll talk about this, and this is where I'm bringing Sergey because he he knows all this um, like a buzzwords and jargon on uh, like a, what which is which, right? And another thing, let me just quickly switch to um, to our faces where while I will be showing you something interesting that I was um, asking in uh, in Twitter recently. And uh, hopefully Sergey will help makes, make some sense for what the people saying, because sometimes I think we do have this, um, how we can say this in English, like a cereal in your head. So we, in Russian, we have like this very uh, saying where like, where someone is uh, uh, have um, not fully understand something, right? We have like, he has a like cereal in his head, cereal or like a buckwheat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so um, yeah. in this case, like like mashed potato in your hand, you know, you don't understand like you're using words, but you don't understand meaning of this word. So this is what I'm talking about. So I wrote, I ask people in in the community, so what uh, reactive framework for JVM people use? And maybe there was uh, some of the things that I didn't specify um, myself perfectly. I didn't tell them. Okay, so we're talking about only like a reactive execution model. We're not talking about like a web framework that kind of implements some of the reactive concept that allows you to, you know, basically use Node.js style event loop inside your like JVM application, right? Um, and maybe it's my fault, but it's also sparked interesting conversation that, you know, we will continue right now. Um, That's a good point, by the way, yeah. like uh, in reactive world, you're talking about reactive frameworks if people really don't understand what you're talking about, whether you're talking about reactive operators or a reactive stack or something. Like some would say that Spring Webflux is a reactive framework. I mean, 
that's a framework that supports reactive paradigm. But uh, usually when we're talking about reactive frameworks, we are talking about Rx Java, Project Reactor, Aka Stream, Aka Streams, and others, probably. Um, but yeah, there is a lot of confusion, and we haven't solved the confusion yet. And by the way, there is a um, thing called Reactive Foundation now. And um, Reactive Foundation, the idea of the foundation is to improve the knowledge of around the reactive paradigm and reactive frameworks, reactive systems, reactive everything, reactive, reactive, reactive. So um, just last week, I think, or this week, was this week or last week? I don't, I don't remember. remember. But anyways, they released, yeah, they released um, a new web page under the Reactive Foundation website uh, talking about uh, principles of reactive. Um, if you go to Reactive Foundation, yeah, I think there is a sub page like principles. Um, if I remember, um, that are talking about reactive streams, reactive frameworks, reactive systems, and stuff like this, which is really great. Um, you can go there and uh, learn about reactive. Wow, I didn't everything. know about this website. It's pretty cool, reactive.foundation. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty interesting. And it's not just a website, that's a foundation, you know? Yeah. And uh, everything is foundation now. Yeah. And some cool things like R2DBC and um, Reactive Streams specification, of course, they go to Reactive Foundation and RSocket is already part of the Reactive Foundation. It was one of the founding projects. Uh, we've been using RSocket in our previous stream to connect to Liclus. So yeah, if you want to learn more about Reactives, then consider checking the Reactive Foundation website because it gives much more answers compared to just let's say, um, reactive stream specification. And let's see who we have here. Uh, VMware, Lightband, uh, Facebook. OK, so I know these two. So because the VMware <laughs> uh, is um, uh, they acquired the Pivotal and there's a lot of work that happened in um, in the Spring Framework and the Project Reactor that we'll be talking about more details. Lightband, I also familiar uh, with uh, their approach. Uh, someone mentioned Someone mentioned this uh, in one of my tweets here. Aka streams. Yeah, the Aka streams. So this is mm -hmm. something that uh, the folks from the Lightband are uh, developing. Now, mm -hmm. why are uh, Sorry, Facebook... but may I interrupt you? Because yes. I think it's it worth know. mentioning that, uh, that uh, Lightband uh, is basically a founder of uh, all this reactive thing. Uh, or like when you're talking about reactive, uh, then we should definitely acknowledge uh, the role um, light band plate and uh, reactive streams. The collaboration between reactive frameworks and GVM was curated and yeah, uh, one of the, delivered by light one band. Of the reactive manifesto author was uh, Jonas Bonner, and the reactive stream specification mm -hmm. link was uh, Victor Klang from, uh, from mm -hmm. uh, light band. That's yep. correct. Yeah. Let's talk about the others like Facebook, like why are they there? And do they also have their framework? Like what they, you know, what they do in the reactive world? So it's a little known fact, but our socket, the protocol we are talking, um, was partially developed uh, by Facebook, and they have our socket C++. And if I remember correctly, it's part of uh, demos. And people, were, when people are talking about our socket, they usually use this um, to highlight that when you are using uh, when you're using Messenger, if I remember correctly, and let's say you want to see online status of someone then this little green or yellow or whatever color they're using uh, mark is actually powered by our socket C++. And uh, if I remember correctly, they're sending GraphQL queries uh, over our socket. They use our socket as a transport. Hmm. And it works really well for them. They also, um, I think they already integrated or they want to integrate it with uh, their version of Thrift or Thrift or whatever, yeah. how to pronounce it. Really hard to pronounce yeah. for a Russian person. So um, yeah, it's a it's a their uh, RPC and serialization mm -hmm. framework that uh, that they use. Yeah. On, uh, um, it's it's Apache. It's so it Apache is a solid 3. alternative yeah, to RPC. Yeah. Uh, it's a it's a open mm -hmm. source uh, beat. So um, mm -hmm. so next the what's the Vlingo? What they do? Vlingo. Vlingo. Um, that's uh, new. Relatively new company uh, by uh, Vogue, uh, one of pioneers of uh, eventing, kind of, or maybe one sourcing. Uh, I hope appreciate me referring to him like that because uh, I think 
he has done a lot of uh, research and uh, work in this area. And uh, part of uh, Blingo is so-called Blingo platform that's currently on screen, I think. Yeah, oh, cool. Mm -hmm. um, and it is um, a set of components for doing event-based systems. Uh, and you'll find actors, you'll find DDD abstractions, you'll find something for event sourcing and uh, other things. And uh, I'm not sure whether Blingo already integrated with RSocket or not. I think they did. Um, but yeah, it's a good example of how a technology, in this case RSocket, can be used by various um, systems and various uh, components of your infrastructure. And just a single spec, which is RSocket, um, how flexible it is when Facebook is using it for let's say, sending GraphQL queries and subscribing on them. Then uh, there is Actors platform. There is also, let's say, Cloudflow uh, RSocket transport uh, from Lightband. Uh, you will find a series of blog posts uh, from them where they invited or they invited Oleg Dakuka as a guest to talk about RSocket um, when it comes to Cloudflow. It's a really powerful protocol. So and there is a foundation why, taking the project. Why I don't now. see uh, why I don't see Alex company that also working on uh, our socket here as a <laughs> as a member. Uh, the Netlify company, uh, the company behind our socket. Um, I'm not aware of the, of the current status of the company, um, but I think it's rather uh, currently. You know, they shifted the focus uh, and were integrated in other companies. Partially, but uh, I'm I, I'm lacking some information right. about it. Uh, so, answer the and question. what's the, uh, the Alibaba doing with this reactive foundation? Uh, like also, our socket. They are doubling down on our socket, and they are building our socket broker uh, and a few other components. And uh, there is a famous uh, famous guy in, um, in GVM, GVM China ecosystem. On Twitter, I know that he's. Uh, He's identifying himself as uh, Jackie Chan, um, but he's a really cool guy. And let me just uh, maybe I'll just yeah, you, you can, you send can, you uh, send me uh, the, this one. I will uh, I will post this then. Um, I uh, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. So I didn't know about this. So I didn't know about this. And I think um, one of the one of the goals that they need to establish is just like establish common vocabulary so the people will not get confused and do not have this like a mashed potato mm -hmm. in their heads about like what the hell is going on here um all right so let's take a look what else so we do have a, a lot of uh, proponents of um uh, of the project reactor in my twitter pool actually you still can um you still can participate you can do a where's the uh, copy link if you're watching this it should be still uh relatively accessible i will post this in a in our chat, uh, it will be there, and uh, feel free to. I uh, know uh, it can it can do. It. But hey, you know which option to select, right? Yeah, um, like uh, option uh, show results, and I will reply in comments. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people also reach out in the comments. They were talking about uh, this. Let, let, let's let's spend like few few minutes before we jump in into the code. Let's. Let's, let's let's talk about some of the comments. So people are talking about the Vertex project. So Vertex project is awesome, and the Vertex project is uh, was like uh, I I think I would not be exaggerating if I would say the Vertex project actually pioneered some of the ideas on um, reactive programming on JVM back in the day. Because I remember when we we're when I was um, um, the running these um, small but quite popular show uh, in um, in 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 Russia called Transport Palotov. It's my 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 podcast. We we're talking about this uh, project in what like 2014 or something like that, uh, where uh, they were talking about oh yeah we're bringing concepts of the Node.js into into JVM world and there's the Vertex had a lot of things, but Vertex mostly provided this. Uh, Kind of reactive model for writing server-side applications, and the, the idea was not about the reactive operators, as you might say right now, right? But more about um, make the engine itself 
different from the traditional request response paradigm and like a thread pools per request or whatnot that we mm -hmm. used to have in the past into more event loop style of Node.js applications where you don't have a blocking IO. And some of the ideas, they, 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 they somehow landed into even in Java e spec these days, right? Um, that's something I'm, um, I'm still, still kind of like a chuckle a little bit on the thing that you mentioned yesterday about these. There's even some of the reactive things in Java e spec as well. Or at least yeah, so uh, in Jakarta rather yeah, or yeah, uh, micro yeah, profile. Like we all, yeah. all farts, we can call it Java e because in our hearts, okay. it's still Java e, okay. you know. Yeah, and the thing with Vertex is that, uh, if I remember correctly, the idea was to introduce a concept uh, that was made popular by Node.js, uh, synchronous non-blocking event loop based processing of requests uh, onto GVM. And uh, Node.js is single-threaded, uh, GVM is multi-threaded, so we have more capacity and better uh, handling of requests. And that's what Vertex, di Vertex did. And uh, I also know that Vertex was started at VMware, um, which is now, or which yeah. later got, uh, or maybe in a spring source, by the way, I'm not sure, was it VMware or spring source? But it was started very close to spring, by the way. And uh, later, um, Tim Fox, uh, he, hmm, I'm, I don't remember where he went. Uh, I don't think it was Facebook yet. Um, was Red it? Hat. Was it Red, Red Hat? Hat? He was yeah, working Red on Hat. Red Hat. Then yeah. after that, uh, he 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 helped to to move Vertex into Eclipse Foundation. Right, right now. Right, right. Right now, it's in Eclipse. He Foundation. also created Hornet Q, or was it Hornet? Q? So he he wrote the Hornet Q. Yeah, he wrote mm -hmm. the Hornet Q, and uh, uh, the Vertex was the next uh, project uh, after Hornet. Q. Mm -hmm. Hornet Q was actually mm -hmm. pretty cool. Um, I I I use it. I oh, use yeah. it a lot in uh, small. Uh, a small project. I didn't use it as like full blown like JMS Messenger. I'm more like using it for mm -hmm. uh, like integration testing type of stuff. But it was really mm -hmm. cool. It's just like one jar and it's like full blown JVM. Oh, JVM. I was really abusing Hornet Q because uh, it was so fast that uh, I was. So what what I needed is to send out notifications like to every user of uh, the game. We were supposed to send notifications. And how you should do it, you should just, um, I don't know, write to Kafka, let's say every new created user, and then you just reprocess Kafka and send indications. Mm -hmm. But back then, Kafka wasn't that popular. So instead, I ended up with a solution where I was iterating the database of users, sending messages to Hornet Q, and then I was consuming from Hornet Q. And it worked very well. Uh, the performance was good uh, because Hornet was so fast. And uh, I later, uh, Figured that Hornet Q was discontinued and then they merged it with uh, Active yeah. Q or Temis or Apollo, yeah. something like this. Yeah. The, the people like that they are like a Greek god's names. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, anyways, so yeah, the Vertex, yes, definitely uh, pioneered some of the ideas on, on this one. But um, still, I consider Vertex as the framework for like a server side um, the programming. And, as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, if you look at this, uh, like we started this conversation about the KSQL DB, we actually, the KSQL DB team actually rewrote um, the core, like uh, the, the the transport protocol uh, using uh, the Vertex. Previously it was JT and just the rest. Uh, Vertex give um, HTTP2 and the WebSocket and HTTP REST API for, um, for KSQL DB. You know, naturally, because uh, the team right now working uh, at Confluent. So, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. so and uh, the surprise, yeah, surprise. and the some of the like internals, it's still like the, this key SQL DB Java client still uses for things from from Vertex. So uh, that's true, Ricardo. Um, that's um, that's uh, Ricardo was uh, right when he points out. Next thing is that the people talking about Nati, Nati a lot. So in my opinion, Nati is is again not exactly what I was asking for, you know, it's not the thing that I was asking. Um, Nati, in my opinion, it's just like this Node.js for Java, right? So that event loop thing and low level uh, handle of uh, network stuff, so you don't need to develop uh, 
you know, level four protocols for yourself, level seven protocols for yourself. You, you already have it. And so Net is a framework for building like a web, web uh, frameworks. You're not building um, apps out of Net, right? You're building frameworks. Even Vertex uses uh, Net internally. Is as far as I can remember. Vertex is using Net, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> um, I didn't, I didn't see what you, uh, what you showed there. Um, and uh, no, don't worry, just watch the recording. Okay. <laughs> um, so um, next thing is that play framework. Okay, so do we have any uh, words to say about play framework? Um, Scala. <laughs> okay, next. Do, do uh, we have? <laughs> yeah, next. Yeah. So, yeah. So the play framework, mm, it's not. Okay, let's be honest. Like since we started sharing some of the you know old memories here, I remember the time when the play framework was actually good. And when I say actually good, and the uh, play framework supported Groovy, and it was play framework version one. It, at that time, it was not like a fully abused by uh, Scala and become like a reactive, um, like a playground for, um, for you know, for for framework developers. Um, but yeah, so the, right now it's majority uh, users, I guess. They you still can use Play in Java, right? So these days you can use yep. it, um, but. Uh, Actually, I think you can use any light band project with Java nowadays. Like they focus on Java DSLs because they have a significant amount of users uh, coming from Java and not from Scala. So they, they kind of have to. Um, and yeah, in, in, in this case, it's um, the, okay. So people telling me that I'm quieter, I'm quieter than. And let me see if I can do this. What about now, dear my friends? Uh, check my. Um, check my sound let me quickly fix it here i think that should be a little bit better because i see on my side i'm clipping so i will fix that yeah so um, the in um I, I was i was i was talking some some other people saying james ward for example he was huge huge fan of the playing framework and every time when he showed this and like every time it's just telling me that like java api is rather cumbersome. It's possible to use it, but it doesn't feel like very natural the way how you would use, for example, with Scala. So, and again, not exactly what I was asking. So, interesting thing is that we're going into world of modern, um, <laughs> uh, the modern, um, can we call it flame wars these days now? Religion wars. Um, so there's a Scala. Modern there's... wrong answers. Yeah. So there's uh, the Kotlin uh, coroutines. And um, as far as I understand, I think this is uh, the answer. This coroutine is closer to my what I'm asking rather than uh, the answer from Eugen, um, from Zhenya, who's who's saying that the Ktor is kind of like a white Ktor is not that right? Because I guess I was more asking about like how I can like write my like public static void made apps um, using the reactive approach, and I think you can do this with, with coroutines, and um, they um, might have some integration with uh, things that we will be integrating today as well. How do you feel? Do you still hear? Are you still here? Because... Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Or but like I, I lost you, the idea. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to talk about Kotlin. Okay, anyway, so... No, no, uh, actually, I, we, we could talk about Kotlin. And uh, I think the right answer to your uh, poll would be why Kotlin flow is not there, uh, or Curtin's flow is not there, because that would be a nice addition or maybe nice alternative to all these uh, reactive frameworks. But dropping Cater was weird. Like, I mean, I was surprised. Uh, and I know some folks from uh, the Coroutines team, uh, they have a very good you know, understanding of all this reactive stuff. So yeah, but maybe, you know, so Cater needs a bit more promotion. Yeah. So they're maybe. dropping it everywhere. Uh, and again, maybe it's a, it's a my yeah. fault because I didn't uh, specify this clearly what I was looking for in in in, uh, in this content. So interesting thing that um, uh, who was there? Uh, it's Marat. Marat uh, throw me this interesting thing that I never thought it existed or uh, like um, where is it? Uh, this is exactly my thought. 
like this is exactly what i thought like <laughs> literally like is there another one? Oh my god like w w what is that um and it has a like a very nice picture and i think it's it's amazing uh, i really appreciate uh their time to to look in this one and i think this uh, reactive uh, foundation should uh, should use this visual representation i am a visual guy i really love you know visualizing things and i think it, it just like strikes me very well and i know now exactly where to or what to ask next time right so essentially what i was looking for is uh, like um, streams naturally and uh, i don't know why it put this as a uh, extensions because yeah that maybe weird. no it's actually in the same category of programming and streams. programming yes exactly yeah. so programming streams uh, i think it's is, is the same thing because maybe he was thinking about relations between rex java and reactor because it's you know this not mm -hmm. the same people but at least like a people who the 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 same people were were mm -hmm. involved in the both. Oh, projects. just say it. Reactor was the hard fork of Rx Java, and this is fine because uh, uh, the same people who got involved into uh, Rx Java uh, later were involved uh, into, or maybe some some of these people were involved in Project Reactor. And uh, when Stefan Maldini and uh, David Karnick, so they were um, they actually had too much free time on their uh, winter. Uh, holidays or Christmas holidays or whatever. So they just hacked together Reactor 3, which is a rewrite of Reactor. And they took the ideas from RxJava, mm -hmm. applied some Java 8 specific optimizations because optimizations because RxJava was Java 6 for a really long time. Uh, RxJava 3 now supports Java 8 or baseline is Java 8. But back then, if you want to get a better bet if you wanted to get a better performance, you would go with Project Reactor because it's optimized for uh, Java 8, um, and now we diverged, like Project Reactor went into more like a uh, server-side space. It, it always has been, but uh, anyways, and Rx Java, it's a bit hard to say because uh, they still have a strong focus on Android mm, at the same time. Okay, I see. Okay, so we, we even... Mm -hmm. We even forgot this, uh, this side of, uh, um, you know, Developer's life, right? So in this case, yeah. the, um, the the Android developers and they also using this. And one of the uh, reasons that some of these cool things become a popular, right? Um, the let's uh, where is our two faces? Yeah, it's uh, in a in a Java world or like a Rex world. It's also also Android. And uh, yesterday, yesterday yep. I was I was. Uh, I've seen um, this meme where um, the there's new features that came into Java 15, and there's like one look that the guy was talking about some cool stuff coming to Java 15, and after there's another like side of this like a comics where they shows Android users they you know crying. Uh, because they're still using like Java 6 or whatnot. But they have a Kotlin there now, so they kind of sort of, uh, yeah, they kind of sort of good. But anyway, Kinda sorta, so this yeah. mutiny, mutiny. Um, I think it's mutiny. Mutiny. I assume it's mutiny, yeah. Mutiny, interesting. Uh, small rye. Small rye. Oh, Jesus, it's so hard it's, to pronounce. It's just like mouthful. Like, it's like, what is that? Like, small rye is a company? Okay. So the company uh, developed that's, this. It's, it's 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 not a company. That's a specification or set of specifications as part of. Was it microprofile? Yeah, microprofile. So it's su sub set of microprofile specifications, and microprofile was supposed to be Java EE, but no longer Java EE, or they cannot agree on whether it's Java EE or not. Anyways, uh, so Mutiny is an implementation wow. of. So the micro profile it's, small right. Okay, small small right. It's another foundation that holds the projects, right? <laughs> and wow, that's super cool. Um, I didn't know that. So here's 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 some some cool like some, something that you teach people when they participating in this uh, like a uh, podcast live streams or whatnot. Can we call it podcast? I think we can even call it podcast, right? So it's kind of like a video cast with the some of the light coding. Yeah, I, I think today we did, we're doing a video podcast. And you, you know what's funny? It's um, 
the um this like uh the boundary between uh like a podcast video cast live streams they like so so like it, it's 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 blurred so we, we can't say like what what we're doing today but like we wanted to, to 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 do some code but we'll get back to it in um in a in a in a in a second um let's see if we have any um any questions so another um another regular alexander is asking about hystrix so what's the question called yeah, what was the question so what's so the history well he was just like okay let me hystrix uh what was the question um so hystrix it's the remind me what is that um it's um that's technology by netflix to implement resiliency uh distributed resiliency yes, exactly. your those system. um uh, how it's called uh the circuit breakers uh, circuit breakers rate limiters yeah. uh and stuff like this um how it's related to here um Alexander, you need to be more specific. But anyway, so the there's a um, the yeah, I think I think we, we're good in in terms of like explaining uh, where we are. We're gonna be doing the, with this project reactor, and maybe maybe we will touch some other frameworks in future. Um, so my idea, uh, my basically um, my basic thing, I just wanted to have a API that allows me to quickly write apps without creating some extra like a callbacks like someone is just like replied in twitter saying hey what about callbacks like callbacks are awesome no they're not um <laughs> and that must be a node.js developer um, yeah <laughs> so yeah we'll start i'll start looking to this one. for example like this one um like i need to implement some of the in, in order to listen some results that would be um result of the uh, streaming uh push query i need to implement this uh raw subscriber which brought me there like why i need to implement this myself where there are some frameworks that's already providing me with some of the um the apis that allowed me to deal with uh, this type of stuff right so am i am yep. i right sergey so yes. and, uh, today I wanted to... And th to... this framework would also yeah. help you to avoid synchronize it all over the place because I see it there and it's a yeah, what's, red marker what's for me. That? Like, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. that's, uh, that's interesting. And by the way, I mean, I have a very, uh, you know, I have a topic that's very relevant to this one because in Java 15, was it released or yeah, would be released? Yeah. Anyways. So uh, the people, this is what we're talking about. The I just want to show the some of the things like that we will try to um, kind of sort of eliminate and see we can replace with some other frameworks. Is this what we're talking about? The mm -hmm. the asynchronous usage uh, with the um, reactive approach. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. But uh, what what I want to say is that in Java 15, they uh, deprecated and disabled biased locking, which will probably make this code. A bit less performant, and um, it isn't good for your performance if you're using synchronized all over the place. But yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. And there's nothing bad about synchronized, by the way. Um, some reactive frameworks use it uh, extensively. Some use it where necessary. Um, we do have synchronized in a few places in Project Reactor, uh, not performance critical places, I would say. Um, but yeah, <laughs> nice reaction. Um, but yeah, when you implement subscriber where every method is synchronized, uh, then you make it uh, spec conformant, but it may also lead to um, deadlocks. So be very careful by, uh, when, if, you, if you have synchronized on all methods in your subscriber. Just saying. And now we will try to see how, um, how my small laptop is uh, handling um, doing live streams also doing IntelliJ, it also doing some of the <laughs> some of the uh, you know running multiple containers um, on my site. So next time we will be trying to offload this to my another hardware like encoder that potentially will be able to uh, handle stream for us. But uh, hey, today today's you know we'll have whatever we'll have. Uh, and I didn't I didn't show. Our faces. So let's see if we have any other um, comments here. Yeah. So the Alexander meant that uh, that uh, Hystrix is another 
uh, reactive stuff. Um, so yeah, if you can elaborate, Alexander, what you mean by this, um, and this is, I guess, this is what we, this is why we started this conversation with, um, you know, look into the vocabulary, right, of the, um, of the reactive stuff, um, because uh, yeah, there's many things, and different people think different. Um, about reactive but anyway so let's uh, let's get to it so um so i started this uh small uh, small library that allows me to wrap some of the um uh, key sql db uh, reactive stuff um with um uh, you know project reactor um and uh, for just for reference i'm using um whatever latest uh um, whatever latest the project reactor version I need to use in this particular case what is that it's something like uh, Dysprosium so Sergey mm -hmm. so since you oh, probably oh, know yeah. these people <laughs> and you know this uh, thing so can you explain to me like what's the naming convention for naming these releases like what's the okay I have, a, an, I have an explanation and I have a joke okay do it Okay, so the explanation is that uh, despite us having uh, the release versions, we also have release trains. Let's say we want to release Reactor Core, Reactor Native, Reactor Kafka, Reactor Everything all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, Reactor Core is currently at 3.4.x. Reactor Native is reaching 1.0. Reactor Kafka is 1.2. So we can't use a common number, right? We have to use something. So for that we use um, numbers, but we use um, A, B, C, D. But then every project uh, or every family of projects selects uh, what will be A, what will be B, C, uh, and what will be the family of these letters. So in our case we use um, chemical elements, obviously. Which so, elements? Um, oh, sorry. Chemical, chemistry, chemistry, chemical, chemical, chemical. chemical. Okay. Oh, chemical! Oh, Jesus! Yeah, I got recorded. Chemistry. Anyways, uh, yes, um, yeah. So uh, here, that's the D release. Uh, sometimes we refer them as uh, the, as letters, like just D. Um, and the joke was about the next release after the current, because current release is Europium, and the next one will be the F release. There's no and. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, so the F release will be next one. Uh, the current one is Europium. And this, this something, something, uh, I used to call them unofficially dyslexia release because I'm struggling to pronounce this, uh, this something. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah. how I, that's how I end up here. That's how I, you know, brought up this question because I had the same, like, how we can pronounce it? This, Prosium. I just mm -hmm. Google it, and apparently it is a like a chemical element and, and, and stuff. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's cool. But like, what's the what's the element starting with F? We'll just call it F release, like F word. Uh, no, no, no. It's gonna be um, oh oh, just what was uh, Ethereum. No, we got something something perfect, and I don't remember <laughs> anymore. It's gonna be let's, let's Google just like uh, periodic <laughs> periodic table uh, we're looking at the periodic table let's see some images some some good periodic table from okay wikipedia can we see the picture please? oh it's gonna take a lot of time but uh, i think on wikipedia there is a table of uh, all elements um yeah that's a that's a f yeah no what's the uh, Fear, yeah. There's iron. It's a fear, and there's a fermium FM. There was something really good, but now I first don't remember. Yeah, we are so unprepared. I, I was. I, oh, I think yes, it's francium. You know why? Francium. 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 Yeah, francium. Because the creator of Project Reactor, Stefan Maldini, is from France. Uh -huh. Simon Basle is from France, and now we also hired two more team members from France. Which makes a lot of sense to call it uh, francium, or francium, or whatever. 
we have <laughs> consume. Okay. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, now yep. I know. Okay, so like when we look into this one, so right now it's uh, dysprosium, uh, dyslexium, whatever. And for the record, it lost just a little bit to dugnium. And dugnium would be so easy to pronounce. And it also refers to Dugna city in Russia. Yeah. And uh, that was the release after they hired me. But yeah. Uh, but like, <laughs> how you related to to Dubna? Have you ever been there? Have you I'm, ever lived I'm there? from Russia and I've been there. Yeah. Okay, that counts. Okay. Yeah. So people, like, you might feel right now how seamlessly we're switching between the screens, and you see the my screen, Sergey screens, and it always seamlessly, and you don't see any difference. Like, how cool is that? Can we have some likes, please, for that? You know, you know, we got them trying here. Please. Hug me someone, like, give me some likes. <laughs> you know what to do, folks. You know what to do. Uh, we are here um, for for likes. And I am throwing away some, some tears. Um, <laughs> so, all right. So what we're doing here. So now, um, on my screen. Um, so I do have a, a project reactor and I do have a, that this that looks terrible. I'm trying to fix that because right now the um, some of the you know release um, ideas they kind of a little bit detached from the um, overall like internal build. So we will uh, we'll try to fix this. Um, now the um, couple things here naturally. We're using test containers. I use test containers to implement some of the uh, testing strategy for my client. Um, and I'm using this uh, small module that I wrote to test containers for um, Confluent platform. Um, that will be, you know, including scheme registry, including some of the KSQL DB server and things like that. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. And uh, in, in my test scenario, I brought up just like a few, uh, few uh, scenarios. The first scenario, um, is I should be able to create a stream with executing statement. And uh, um, I, I see where the Sergey, since he mentioned, um, since he mentioned uh, the synchronized that he's a red mark, and I believe the block is also his uh, red mark, where he can see this and uh, he can uh, criticize um, the, 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 the code and, and things like that. So the, the couple things here. Um, the result of this uh, query that will generate for me a um, the something. So essentially, when I execute the statement, it also will produce another mono. Let's take a look inside. How does it work? Um, and where is my execute statement? So execute statement uh, from the KSQL DB client returns completable future. And also, I learned that I can do things like mono from future, right? Uh, and uh, gonna be so much fun <laughs> to uh, to to destroy my uh, uh, to destroy my uh, my my coding. Yes, to it's, help uh, you get better at project reactor. Awesome. So um, <laughs> the the previously previous version actually was relying on the another method. So if I go to this um, mono, there's a from um, from future mono from future. Uh, it has a completable future for um, as a method here, so I can take this. But why, Sergey, I shouldn't do this? Why I should su use supplier version? Why I should use overloaded version? And um, instead of using the future directly, create this okay. uh, work with this one through supplier. Actually, you know what? Instead of me telling you the theory, perhaps we should um, you know try in, in practice. What do you think? Yeah. Let's, so, let's do um, it. yeah, just create a test for it. So let's do this one. Um, and again, the, the, the test here would be maybe not testing, testing, but at least it would be like a fancy ways to execute some of the code, right? So uh, without uh, writing public static void mate every time. So we'll do a public void. Uh, should I don't know create future uh, create a mono from, boing. Boing, boing. <laughs> well like oh, French yeah. thing yeah uh, from um, 
from the future. And some spam call. I that must be some Scala you're writing, right? Uh, <laughs> who needs parentheses? Yeah, who needs this? Um, yeah, it's, implicit uh, add test. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> so in this case, uh, we'll take a simple method. Let's do. Um, num, 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 num. Do I have a client options? I do have client options. Let's see if I will do say um, client. Just I will just uh, be very explicit. Uh, create from options. Um, where's my options? They should be available for me now. They but sure, you can just copy and paste. Okay, let's do this one. I but like test. I cannot copy and paste it because it will be. Uh, I, need I mean, don't you already have a test for this method? Or yeah, perhaps we should talk about your test coverage? Yeah, my test coverage is like just like spot on. Um, case QLDB uh, client. Uh, and in this case, I will do things like extract this one um, and case equal to be client. And in this case, I will be using this client here. So it should be case equal uh, like this one. Are you using different name? How this how it would say uh Kisigo DB, I'm using different name. Anyway, so I do have this client and I'll do client um SQL DB client dot uh, list of topics. So when I think it returns, you misunderstand what I wanted to try. Yeah, so you wanted to try me to execute mono from uh, future instead yeah. of uh, from yeah, this one or I'm having browser, browser the existing method. I just wanted to show how to break it. Uh yeah, it's fine. I, I don't want to you break my code just like immediately to break my heart. So, um <laughs> I'll do mono from future and I'll do future here. Mhm. Mm this should do work. Okay, so how I can bring uh, how I can break this, um, um, uh, Sergey? Okay, so it's, it actually would be easier for me to just use the client, um, but for that we'll be using a sequence where we insert something, then we select, and then we delete. Sounds good? Uh, yeah. Can you? Implement this sequence for me. Just uh, reactor client dot insert dot then uh, select dot uh, delay until delete, and then we'll continue. Okay, so it. you're talking about something like this. Um, reactor client. I'm um, do like I do have it somewhere here. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have a reactor client. So first of all, I will do how I can create this create statement. Uh, execute state. Okay, yeah, I do have a. I do have this. Um, oh yeah, let's let's um, let's copy paste. You're right. Um, mm -hmm. Let's copy paste. Let me break this down because I do have exact scenario that you were talking about. Um, okay. So screen query results. Yep. So let's call it. Um, just copy paste, and I will will work on my you know test coverage. And we will call it. I must break you. Um, He's not so using Project Reactor correctly. Can you imagine that? <laughs> okay, just, so just, just now, look how this kitty looks at your code. Like, really? Like, block everywhere? Block yes. last? Oh my god. Okay. So, first <laughs> one, I, creating a, I create a execute stream. Then yeah. I need to uh, select the uh, select. Where is my push query? Um, you can either use single select or stream and just take one, whatever works for you. Um, yeah, I can do things like um, reactor reactor client dot stream query. Uh, where is my push query? This is my push query. I will move it higher here because we don't. 
uh, we do in push query next uh, we do have a property so what it says uh, is it uh, IntelliJ okay so my stream query will return me a flux because it will return multiple use dot flux. next will give you one mono so in this case I will do dot next no so stream query because I'm doing this ah no the, the, over here I'm wrong one uh, dot um, next just the next right yeah just next and after that i will do uh what do you say delete so then can you actually destroy the topic maybe or do something you know delete something or destroy yeah yeah, or... yeah i can mm -hmm. okay in uh, i do have a special method for that so i do have this uh, so yes yeah, so this is a statement yeah. Actually, we don't need if exists because uh, we know that we just created the stream. We can drop it, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll just do execute statement. Uh, so after I did this, um, so I do reactor client dot. Um, uh, sorry for interrupting. Let's use delay until because we just want to delay the result of uh, select. So delay. Mm hmm until and uh, result here so what is gonna what's what it's taking um uh, it's, it's taking function, function you can you can ignore um that returns, arguments that returns uh mono or publisher mono yeah okay. yeah i'll do reactor client uh i don't need to yep. do this one just it must be a function and uh, when it's function, it needs to return something. Yeah, it does return. Yeah, so just uh, add a dummy uh, argument. Is a as a make it lambda. Here. Yeah. So let's do this one. Uh, just prefix is something like unused uh, dash. Yeah. GP. So in this case, uh, what's the parameters? It needs to be there. The item, so just unused or something. Give it a name, otherwise, it thinks that uh, you're not you're not having any arguments. New function. So let's uh, let's idea to do oh. thing for me. Yeah. So in this case, I will do uh, dot. And I'm just and just turn it. I am so execute statement returns me. Uh, a publisher that you need to return acknowledgement why it's using raw in this case delayed until because uh, you delay every item or like next item so until this, this publisher returns yes okay and uh, uh okay interesting you need to return yeah ah so you want me to destroy stream okay before we return uh, the result of select to the consumer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we create, and we select, and we destroy, and then so we return. And the publisher, in this case, we just uh, the mono is also implementing what? Yes. So, so in this uh, case, every type in Project Reactor implements uh, publishers that we can easily return it from uh, functions. So like delay until. Okay. Delay until. Okay. So delay until and uh, replace with lambda. This one mm -hmm. we're talking about, and the next one is um, dot dot block. Uh, you want to show me why it's bad? Um, I want to show you how everything is screwed up at the moment. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's just try to execute this code, um, and let's just print the result of uh, dot block. going to be raw and and we do south something like this right mm -hmm. uh, it will take some time to start because it used this container um and hey. you know, <laughs> no it's not nothing to do with this container it's just like because my computer running like a the, the tons of things like we're running the the the, the 
you know, this uh, like streaming session, plus there's Skype that uh, reading my screen. I'm actually, personally, I'm super fascinated um, the uh, the performance of this like a 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro and I'm really not looking forward if they would drop performance while introducing um, this uh, like Apple Silicon uh, chip that would be potentially slower. Uh, so I would not be mm -hmm. able to do, you know, this weird stuff as we're doing right now. Um, as you can see right now, it's again, people, uh, if you're using normal computers, um, you, you, you know, desktop computers, you might not see this type of issue. I use laptop exclusively since 90, oh, sorry, 90, <laughs> since the 2000, uh, <laughs> since 2006. Uh, since 2006, um, I, I bought myself a laptop and I never bought any uh, computers afterwards. So that's why, you know, and I'm not stalling. I'm not stalling. I'm just like waiting until this test will be executed. Uh, maybe faster would be uh, for me just use a local installation um, since it will, uh, you know. Actually, the fastest would be to use a reusable containers mode, but you're using networks, which uh, is currently not supported, but we are working on it. Yeah. And yeah, as so kind of test containers represent the uh, here, um, yeah. I feel you should say I feel your pain. I, so do, no, I definitely feel your pain. Yeah, n now it's it's running. Um, we can live code a solution today if you want. I can show you a hack how to make it work. Yeah, let's do it. So, and the uh, people would see this immediately uh, benefit. So, um, it just send uh, some result column names, uh, which is coming from. Uh, reactive client somewhere I have a login statement I specifically I do have it from uh, stream query I guess um, inside my mm -hmm. stream query I believe I do have a the column names but there's no there's no oh, result this one is correct <laughs> that's funny yeah so you can see it's misbehaving right I think it's stuck oh even worse it's stuck right. but um, it, it, anyways, yeah, it doesn't send the uh, it doesn't send the uh, response. So it should like it's just one query you're creating. So we're creating stream. Can you enable yeah. the logging of uh, the operations in KSQL client? Can you make it log every uh, operation you send? Um, I can do it on the server side, not on the client. Sure. I maybe mean, maybe I should. I can, but like I, it's uh, maybe somewhere inside, and I didn't look uh, what what exactly they do, like in how okay. how it's done. Then uh, let's do another. Oh wait a second. Actually, I think I just fooled myself um, into a valid <laughs> result. Um, just give me a sec, please. Yeah. You want me to show your screen? What you're trying to do? Hmm. Um, Thinking. Um, also, we can do another way. So you can open this project. It's on GitHub on your side. And since you're not running the uh, the the stream right now, you will be able to you know the crush my code much faster. Sounds and good. Let me get it, my hands on your project in, in front of me. So you know, we kind of like a, uh, there's there's my child of the project, my child of the weekend, uh, couple hours that I uh, snuck in for my family. And uh, now you can, you know, beat shit out of it, saying like you're. <laughs> and for, for that matter, um, let me bring a uh, appropriate, appropriate tweet. I would say that's essentially sums uh, sums everything that uh, we do in in live streams. This is pretty much me and my code in live stream. So I hope you're enjoying watching this. Precisely. So let me open the project then, and I'm not sure if I'm sharing my screen or not, but I'm just importing um, it. So yes, it's not very fancy just, yet. Yeah, let me know when you will be ready. Just uh, uh, I'm ready, but importing. So um, importing. Okay. Now depends you on the definition of ready then. <laughs> but <laughs> Always it, ready. so far so good. So yeah, I, th I think I can start presenting something. Yeah. So what definitely triggered my um, my attention, and I hope you can see the screen, screen by the way. Um, um, people should be able to see your screen, but like I just yes. hit command 12, like you just like remove all the windows. 
because it's a Gradle window and there's a project window, that would be just like, yeah, that's, okay. yeah. that looks good. So uh, what triggered my attention is this method and the fact that uh, you create future and then you return from future supplier. And the previous version was like this, as you previously mentioned. Yep. Um, so it was just uh, Mona from future. I'm not sure why you imported the method. It's still it's still working. So, but for the record, um, I would like to say here because there was no other uh, there's no other method. So previously I used the uh, not this uh, this dystopian uh, release. I used um, the the previous one, and it didn't have an overloaded method for for Mono. Um, that's super cool. Um, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if if anyone from IntelliJ team is watching this stream, please answer the question later in comments below. Why the hell it stopped importing my Gredo project? I didn't press anything. I just started from scratch, fresh project. I started importing it. Why? Uh, because it's, <laughs> it's just like smart enough. You're not smart enough to understand that. You need to do this immediately. Oh, so, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe because I'm not using Kotlin or something. Um, uh, Kotlin will not help you, my friend, in this particular case. Uh, yeah, I, I tried. Because Kotlin from, from the comments, sometimes I have a feeling that like dropping Kotlin would help anywhere. Like, uh, any issue you have, just use Kotlin and ah, it'll be good. It's it's um, like you know you can you can drop uh, the Putin everywhere and also should help. You know. When oh yeah, especially in asking... polls. Yeah. In fact, in your uh, in your polling, you should have included uh, Putin in uh, in options, not just Reactor or Java, but also Putin. And you may have ended up with now you know 146 percent of votes uh, went to the Putin option. Some local Russian humor, but yeah. Now you have it, guys. Um, and probably YouTube won't be uh, promoting this video um, because of these uh, name drops that we have here. Oh, I'm sorry. Awesome. So, <laughs> at least the live stream uh, attendees will see it. That's a very good reason to attend live streams because video gets removed later. Because we, every time we do a stream, we mention either some stupid virus or some politics or something else. So please watch us uh, online if you want to follow every crazy stuff we are doing. So uh, I'll revert yeah. this code. So I'm not doing any changes, but uh, this code was like this before. Mm -hmm. And um, Victor was like, hey, check this out. I just wrapped KSQL with, um, with Project Reactor. And I was like, oh, it looks really cool. But you know what? You should really use Mono from Future with Supplier, not just um, you know from Future, yeah. because this method should should never have existed at all. Like Mono from Future instance, it should never have existed. But anyways, it is there, so it's very easy. If you have a Future at hand, then you would most probably use from Future. What um, what Victor did is he changed it to this, which <laughs> makes zero sense. But we'll see later why. Um, now, as a test beaten person, I'll just go to the test and we'll start playing around. Um, hope Victor can... Actually, I can just do it myself. I'm good enough at copy-pasting code, don't, yeah, code, don't exactly. worry. Yeah. So I have create stream. Cool. I can stream inserts. Nice. I don't want to, by the way. Uh, I can stream query. Um, basically... Or no, not basically, but I think I got an idea why it didn't work because it didn't stream anything and into the stream, right? Right. This is why ah, it's still yes, running exactly, on the machine. Exactly. Yes. Still waiting because uh, it's the way how it works, right? The, there's uh, if I probably will go and do insert, and after that it will. Uh, yep. It's still running. Yeah, it's still burning my processor time. But let's do a cool thing. So we have create stream here. And then once we create, we want dot .zen, and we want to insert something, like stream inserts, factor stream inserts. You not necessarily need to use the stream insert. There's a, another method that um, um, stream inserts is for batching. So okay, may to... okay, may execute query. Yeah. Uh, is there insert execute query in your the, test? Yeah, there is a um, insert somewhere. You, you just go to a reactor client. Cheesy um, data. 
there's uh, some data yeah. that you can use. Um, you can okay. select. You know what? I think I'm old enough to be able to just write it by hand. So yeah. insert into, uh, and then create. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh Jesus! It needs topic name, values. And this first time me trying key sequence from the algebra. No, no, no. There's a there's a method insert into. You just need to uh, specify. Um, you don't need to do this. So if you do red client insert into, and after that you specify name of the stream, and after that you specify in this key SQL object that will include um, the okay perfect. The, the it's data. just perfect. It's just perfect to demonstrate the issue. And key SQL object how instantiated must probably new SQL object. Yep. Hey, let me screw it up. Okay, and uh, maybe I can do something. Oh, nice. Good. Uh, let's do. Yeah. Oh no, it will fail, right? Because it will fail because you don't have a, this. Uh, you need to have a ch shipment, cheese, and uh, if you want to fail, there's a, the test for this method. There's a no, no. I, I want bad. to. I want to show how the current code would fail. Uh, shipment ID bar would it work? No. Yes. Uh, no. Yes, ID no bar. You, need to, you need to also in put the um, uh, number. Two, of course. Yeah. Then anything else I need to cheese. Uh, cheese, okay, cheese. Cheese will be smile first. Yeah, and it would be timestamp. Uh, shipping timestamp. Uh is it required? Uh I don't know. Oh, okay. You can never try. Mind. Yeah, never mind. I think I'm capable of providing a timestamp. Uh to string. Ah, uh, so boring. Yeah, just like yeah, something so, like that. Um, we create stream, then we insert into, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It would fail if we first insert, then we create stream, right? Uh, it will fail if you would try to insert and after that to create. Yeah, because it says it Perfect. will say there's no, it doesn't exist. So let's give it a try. And I just realized that I don't have images that you were using, so most probably it will take an infinite amount of time just executing this code. But um, let's give it a second and uh, meanwhile. It will not uh, the crush your um, the the bandwidth. Oh, don't worry. You have a fat channel. It's five five one. I think I already have Kafka, so I'm just uh, images. Kafka. Um, let me just save a bit of time. Five three four. Would it work? Like uh, this. Should work. Yep. It should it should definitely work. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Then I will just change it and rerun. I don't have anything running yet. Perfect. So um, see how your computer faster when you are not running stream right now. So you just like type in around and um, you you know look cool and smart. Yeah. This is exactly because. I'm not running anything on my computer, not because I know how to do cool and smart, but just, yeah. <laughs> um, so while we are waiting for things to be downloaded, uh, I think I will just review some of the tests because uh, I do have some questions. Yes. Um, so perhaps question number one, why did you use from iterable here? Uh, and I suppose the answer would be because it's so cool to use Project Reactor and so... so Oh, nice. Remember, um, remember when the uh, Java streams were just introduced, and um, some uh, Java developers got very severe case of this disease called streamosis. Yep. Um, I think it's just, uh, like a reactive. It was uh, coined uh, by uh, Tagir. Tagir, Tagir yes. Uh, from the brains. Yes. Yeah. Res respect uh, to Tagir, and uh, I guess that this is kind of like a modification when this uh, streamosis will. Um, uh, the, to have a mutation and uh, goes into reactive version of uh, streamosis. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I thought, okay, I'm get as a result, I am getting a list. Why I not can create the flux out of it and uh, use a reactive approach to iterate over. Mm -hmm. why, why I cannot, Sergey? Why? Why it's uh, why it's so bad? Well, you definitely could, but. First thing is, like, let me just, you know, push your code a little bit. 
Yeah. So first of all, what if it now? Uh, what, what if it turns now? Uh, I mean, I assume it would not do anything or, or like this. And then test is nothing. Um, yeah. So. And it will yeah. be green test, right? So it will yeah. just. Or perhaps we can add something like a third blocking response not equals now. And by the way, if you're lazy and you have an assumption, at least put something like assert. Mm -hmm. And then. Yeah, um, I was always like, under the impression that the, the asserts needs to be kind of like explicitly enabled in JVM. Is it not the case anymore? They um, enabled by default yes, or whatnot? Yes, but when you run tests, it will be automatically enabled. Ah, okay. So you're good. And mm -hmm. it's the fastest way to make some assumptions, uh, and, which is nice because And we break things faster so you would, you know, you, exactly, you know that. Exactly, exactly. It isn't as helpful because uh, you, you will not see a message like why, what, so maybe you want to add something like Locking response uh, must not be now. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. I, I, <laughs> okay, I knew that it's possible, but I always forget the syntax. So now I'm surprised that I actually managed to do it from the first attempt. How cool is that? Yeah. And our YOLO test just failed it. Let's just have a look because we, we'll get back to the test later. Yeah. You see? Can it insert values into uh, a known stream? Yes. Hmm. But right? Why is that? Yeah, why is that? Um, we are using a cute statement, then we use dot zen. Yeah. So project vector is broken, right? Yeah, of course. It's, of I'm course. pretty sure. Like because like it's it's a one line by line, like why it would not be. Yeah. Um let's experiment. Let's do something like mono defer. Because we just want to defer this, then, because it seems that execute statement, uh, create statement happens before, or oh, sorry, happens after insert into, mm -hmm. uh, or will happen, would happen. Um, so it seems that we have some issue with the ordering. Let's mm -hmm. do it again with mono defer. So why, why, what is the mono defer? What it does? Like it creates another it mono makes it out lazy. of. Basically, um, it allows you to uh, postpone. The creation of mono, uh, and then every time you subscribe, this mono defer will get executed. But, but I'm, I'm not subscribing here. I'm using block here. Exactly. But when you when you're using block, it will implicitly subscribe uh -huh. because it's not possible, literally not possible, to do anything with reactive types except if, subscribing if on them. Subscribing. Yep. Any other method like dot block, dot cache, dot whatever um, would subscribe and maybe return something else mm -hmm. you can also do something like to future and dot yeah. get and it will return completable future void in yeah. this case because we use then but um uh, because insert returns uh, void which is yeah which is valid which um, is valid but weird um need to check with the team because maybe it should return same kind of like a result at least i know that was inserted like or the name how many? Yeah, how many records were something like oh, that? I don't know. Yeah. So it seems that when we change it to uh, modern defer, it yeah. fixes the issue. So let's revert and uh, have a look. So first of all, we all smart here. We know how Java works, so we can change it to this. Um, was it insert? Yeah, insert. Because uh, that's how GVM will be executing this code. It will first insert, oh, sorry, it will first create mono for insert, and only then it will continue with execute statement dot then dot block. Mm -hmm. Once again, reactive streams are broken then, right? Yeah. Because we are doing something wrong here. Uh, I mean, we, we don't yeah, want insert code, to happen. The, you know, yeah, it looks like it's important code, but it will not be you know, doing anything as important. Yes. And that's. Precisely why we are talking about code versus hot publishers. Uh -huh. And it's a bit of theory, but the idea is uh, trivial. Every time you return a publisher, it should be a code publisher. Where code publisher means that uh, that's a publisher that it's, is ready to be subscribed, but it, it wasn't you know, warmed up in, uh, upfront. 
it is a lazy publisher. It is a publisher that is, uh, it, is a it is a factory, basically. Because exactly, you just stole my line. I, I wanted to say like instead of uh, instead of creating actual object, we need to follow the factory pattern. And uh, I guess uh, supplier uh, the interface is the we'll get back to it in a moment. It's, it's the idea to 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 have it right. Yeah, but uh, what I want to say is that uh, Mona Empty subscribe new subscriber. Uh, this is how reactive streams work um, or look. Um, so here we have some methods, and we have this unsubscribe subscription. Mm -hmm. So it's not the usual thing that people are talking about, but basically a publisher in reactive streams is a factory of subscriptions. Publisher in reactive streams is a factory of subscriptions. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that's. Uh, yep. I guess this is how um, the reactive streams specification talks about it. Yeah. So. If we now, actually, really, oh, I need to double check. But yeah, if you now go to this insert into, I'll just open it. What happens here? You say, okay, case equal client insert into, mm -hmm. and then from future mono defer void mono. Uh, so you you actually attempted to implement this whole thing. Um, just maybe it requires a small change. We'll uh, talk about it reason... uh, in a moment. The reason why I was doing here, um, I was find, I was trying to find a way how I can um, catch the error inside uh, inside my method, and um, mm -hmm. instead of propagating this up to this, because like if you're doing this error, if you're not specifying an error handler anywhere like in your code, it will be just swallowed, um, mm -hmm. and it only when I run dot block. It were able to, you know, throw this error. So I was trying to just like yep. the reason why I'm doing this here. I was just trying to catch um, the throwable error inside my method mm -hmm. and always uh, log this mm -hmm. whenever using this method. Okay, so we actually can put this thing here. We don't need it um, in the current state. It won't work and it won't log the error. We mm -hmm. can check it, but promise me, it'll just save some time. Yeah. But what happens here? Completable future on GVM. Mm -hmm. has weaker promises. Uh, I mean, not promises, not, not pun intended or anything, but um, <laughs> there is no promise that it will be lazy. You can mm -hmm. never assume that it will be lazy. In fact, most of the implementations return uh, a handler to some already started operation. So that here, you start the operation by the time we call insert into, not by the time we subscribe, which from future supplier would do. And uh, the previous code like this uh, demonstrates the issue very well. This one with supplier um, also demonstrates the issue. And uh, it's also like, why why we have to do it like this, right? Most probably you had this question. And uh, when I suggested to use supplier, you were like, OK, this dude is crazy. Like, he's suggesting some crazy things. Most probably um, that, that was on your mind. No, no, um, no. no. That I, 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 didn't, I didn't thought about this. But uh, at the point where you were, you know, telling me to use a supplier, and I was, um, I was thinking about this same, same thing about the completable future. So probably um, during the time, if I will using this future mono, regardless if I will call any method on the mono, this future will mm -hmm. be executed anyways, mm -hmm. and will it be still available next time? Probably not. So I was not sure. So I think the supplier is actually makes a lot of mm -hmm. sense here, um, just uh, okay. like uh, naturally. But um, okay. yeah, once you're, ex you're explaining this, uh, it makes a lot of sense now. And in fact, I'll keep this code as is uh, because I want to try one thing. Let's change the code. Let's do something like let's uh, insert into and then on error um, or repeat when. So we'll be getting an error. Um, I'm not sure whether we can. Does it throw an error? Uh, yeah, you, it, it will throw a sql error, um, a sql exception if it's uh, um, we're not able to to you know insert. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, some case SQL exception. Mm, let me filter it. Um, Exists. Key SQL this, client this, exception. This, this. Key SQL client. Client. Key SQL client exception. Exception. Yeah. Okay. Client. Something like this. And um, and I think I'm not using the API I wanted. Uh, and I'm also using. Okay, never mind. Let's just use retry when. Oh, come on. There is. Uh, from. Okay, that's. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, retry signal. Uh, I don't really care about the signal, but uh, I'll delay every uh, signal. And um, signal. We want to perform create statement, because we know that if it fails, it fails because we failed it to create statement, right? Mm -hmm. oh. So this code should work um, fine. So we fail. I'll add some logging. Then we let's just take one that we are not running infinite loop. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that we do the operation. If it fails, we retry. We create the table, and then we uh, perform insert into once again. Um, Okay, makes sense. It's, it's just one of the options how one can do something similar. So I run this code, and trust me, it's supposed to work if we implement everything correctly in our reactor client. Mm -hmm. Not in reactor, but in uh, a SQL client. reactor yeah. client. Yeah. So we run the code, and we should see just the error, nothing you know, improving um, or anything. Perhaps here, looking here before. Look. What's going to happen, however, is that retry attempt uh, would not retry the insert because we are reusing the same instance of future. Right. So you see, we have this error and then cancels because of the error. Uh, so on error. And I think this error would be repeated two times. Oh, Jesus, really? Not in... oh, okay. Insert failed. Yes, two times. You see here? Like. Oop. So, how can we fix it? First option would be to use mono defer here. And if we use mono defer, we would indeed fix the issue because now, even to insert into creates um, what it creates, it creates a future. But now we defer the future creation to the subscription time, at subscription time, um, so that now everything everything is all right. Um, so we can work around it if our reactive client is implemented incorrectly. But uh, ideally, we should also fix our client. So I'm just waiting for test to start, and I will also have one recommendation for you uh, regarding the test setup. Um, mm -hmm. We can do later, or maybe we can even make it reuse. Um, first error, and then no error. Um, and if we look for insert failed, it failed okay. once. Failed once because it was supposed to fail, right? Yeah. And second one passed. Because we created the statement, so when we retry, and how retries are working in reactive frameworks, when you retry, you simply resubscribe, because as we said, publisher is a factory of subscriptions, which means that you're supposed to be able to get multiple subscriptions out of the factory, not just one referring to the same future. Mm -hmm. So that now, if I remove defer from here, and if so we it's go gonna here, be two, uh, two monos that would be created from. Uh... From this call, right? So first no, time just, just it one will execute mono. with error. Second time it will execute. Um, 
So first time it will execute uh, with error. Second time it will be executed, uh, second mono will be executed um, when uh, we successfully create the stream. So yeah, it's the same mono that will be subscribed two times. And um, same mono will be subscribed to text. So uh, it, here's the here's the interesting difference. I think this is the difference where um, the, the the mono and this completable future. Well, you know, when they I've seen the presentations when the people are talking about uh, completable future is kind of sort of like a very similar to mono. You cannot reuse computable future, right? You once it's uh, or you can. No, you cannot. And even more, I mean you'll get the same result, it's yeah. cached inside uh, the completable future. So yeah. it's literally a future and you have no control. Even worse, you have no control of when it should start. You assume that if you have future at hand, then most probably it already started, which, which sometimes is, isn't what which is you not want the case. To. It depends, I guess it depends yeah. on uh, how busy would be this like a default uh, common thread pool that exists somewhere inside uh, j j how it's called like a, a for join pool right as far as i remember uh it depends i mean you, you may provide your custom implementation of completed features that won't be using any threading at but all but like uh, in general like in general standard oh, one yeah. it, 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 we don't know because it's a, based on the implementation um yes another yeah, thing black so box. the the another difference for example if we're talking about say stream in the java util so once mm -hmm. a stream created once you deplete the stream you don't have ability to replay the stream so i think this is the difference between yes. jvm classes and here so i didn't know that mm -hmm. and i thought that i cannot reuse the same one or i cannot subscribe to this mono and the reason why that i couldn't do this because i didn't use some uh, supplier i did use just a just a mono from right mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And one can say that Mono is something like a supplier of completable futures, but it's using a publisher type from reactive streams. But conceptually, it's similar to a supplier of completable futures, but it also supports uh, cancellation because completion stage, the interface behind completable future, mm -hmm. does not support cancellation. You cannot just say, Hey, start this long running operation, and then five seconds later, actually, you know what? I don't need it. Yeah. Just stop doing it. No. Uh, in fact, with completable futures on GVM, even if you cancel completable future, because you can cancel completable future, you can. Like uh, completable future, let's say completed future one two three cancel. Yeah. We can actually no may interrupt that. it running. It it would no, no, there's no guarantee that it will be cancelled. Um, no, it's interesting. There is a guarantee that the observer of this completable future will not get uh, the notification. But if we go to the implementation of completable future and we look at the cancel method, we'll see that cancel internal complete, alternate result cancellation exception, return cancelled or uh, post complete. But if you go deeper into the implementation. First thing you notice is that this flag, you see, it is a very important flag, whether to interrupt or not. Mm -hmm. Do you see it? Like yes. how many usages does it have? No, I just want to, uh, yeah, like found one usage and this usage is in a comment. <laughs> so it's actually completely ignored. No one is using this, okay. And you know, why it's ignored or like where it comes from because cancel method is a method from uh go to declaration oh geez how to go to the declaration of this method without um hmm, super method yes it's future it's not completion stage it's the future interface mm -hmm. and by accident kind of completable future implements future yeah so this cancel is from future, and some futures do implement cancel properly. Completable future is just a set of stages. So the only thing that you're doing when you cancel, you say, hey, I no longer interested in the result of this stage. So you're not interrupting anything. Yeah. And if you start a very long running operation and it returns completable future or completion stage, well, I have bad news for you. You cannot cancel it. 
yeah. unless some framework supports some custom types that implements completion stage that provides cancel method, blah, blah, blah. While with Mono, you have a strict notion of uh, cancellation as part of the reactive stream specification. Back to our um, lamps, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so, did we fix it? No, we did not. Um, so, to fix the client, the only thing that we need to do is to move the thing here. So that now, uh, now I had this dangling method, so I'll just add mono, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, do, so, not forget, uh, do not forget to submit the PR or just like, I will give you, you know, the, the push. Uh, we'll figure out, figure out something later. Um, or you can watch the stream and replicate the same actions. <laughs> <laughs> Just that's uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's another thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's, that would be it. So um, you saying that it's uh, it's more correct not to capture this as a result, but rather than um, it's it's nothing to do about uh, how can I say? So like what 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 you was using? It's kind of like a, the order of code, not the order of results or something like that. You know the. So in this case, from future, that will be generated uh, by uh, code we'll call supplier that will, when the supplier mm -hmm. will be called, it will actually generate this future. And after that, this future will be transformed into mono. It's mouthful. Uh, and you, if you didn't follow, yeah. it's fine. I just like trying to, you know, the repeat uh, after myself. Mm -hmm. It's kind of inception. You know, we're going into deeper, deeper, uh, deeper, uh, deep roots on this one. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. When I capture this is through the variable, uh, the call of this uh, already happened. So it's, uh, you know, when we were, you know, the cheap optimizations, you know, when you in the method, you try to not the call method multiple times, you can if it result mm -hmm. returns the same result over and over, just like capture the variable that we were told in the synchronous programming. It's not maybe the case if, if they synchronous here because uh, mm -hmm. It's not about you know capturing the result once. It's about mm -hmm. uh, since we it's it's more like a factory style of invoking these mm -hmm. things rather than um, what's the opposite to factory? Opposite to factory, uh, cache. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yes, and uh, that's the suggestion I can give. Like, let's say you have a supplier of uh, UUID mm -hmm. uh, ID generator. Mm -hmm. Uh, so when you when you're working with reactive types and when you are not sure whether uh, you're doing the right thing with the code versus hot publishers, um, that's by the way when I say code versus hot, that's um, that's it's from the no. documentation that part that yes. I ignored yes. by that's you know, something oh, okay, you can Google. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, it's a part of the documentation, folks. You can go and uh, find this in. Uh, I will like quickly switch to my screen and show this to, to people because I've seen this. Yeah, so it's it's a part of uh, it's part of um, of the docs and there's like a advanced conceptual content in this part that I skipped. So yeah, back to three. Fair enough. So um, let's say we so we're not using any reactor here. So let's focus. Supplier, just GDK supplier and UID. And now what you what essentially you did is this. ID equals uh, random ID. And now imagine using this code um, Multiple times. in production. Yeah. Just like that's your ID generate. Yeah. I mean, it works. It returns something, <laughs> but it's incorrect because yeah, um, because the the result most likely going to be cached. You know, once it will be it, this random UID would be called once. Uh, I think this is some of the optimization that will even JVM will do, right? So because it sees, oh yeah, that's the result will be used multiple times. So just like I will just cache it somewhere, um, and that that's 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 the intention, right? This is what mm -hmm. we're talking about. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty so neat. In, in term, yeah, is this? Uh, yes. So in this case, when the supplier will be calling method get, you know, when the uh, receiver of the supplier will be calling this get, this method will be executed like exactly this moment in time. Not the result of this moment um, that uh, it will be 
either I don't know what's the word like in line no not in line right the result will be cached somewhere like in this cache yeah it's it's actually a caching uh, approach that uh, happened here like we cache the result uh, of uh, the future mm -hmm. but even worse we started some operation on background um, because we received the future which means that most probably it's running somewhere in our case we had this. Uh, wrong order of methods uh, or wrong method of co mm, wrong order of codes. So mm -hmm. this is this is why it's very important to uh, return code publishers because this mechanism of uh, resubscribing will be used by the normal flow, like just uh, the order of methods, but also when you retry, when you repeat, when you do a lot of things uh, in reactive frameworks. And that's a good thing because you can you can do it with reactive frameworks. You don't need a special library for retries, or uh, you don't need a special library for repeating when the result was empty. It makes it makes a lot of sense now. Yes, yeah. I, I I totally understand. Okay, cool. Um, now we changed just a little bit, and boom, now it's working just fine. Mm -hmm. And there is a second thing, a uh, very short thing that I know. Uh, but I think we should talk about, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Is this one. Because here um, we use from Iterbo. Okay, we are misusing the API. We should probably have used something like assert J because assert J is awesome. Please use assert J. There's nothing better than assert J. Um, and I'll be using blocking response. I can just remove a search not now, remove this one, and uh, now we can say size one first extracting, oh really, uh, get topic, Good topic yep. get topic, and it get format. So I'm a groovy guy, you... Nice. You must probably know that by abusing of IT uh, or it. Um, abusing IT, yep. Yeah, is equal to tuple um, sh shipment topic name and JSON. Something like this. So yeah, that's wow, how that's I would cool. do it. Yeah. So... And, uh, um, so in this case, do I need to do like uh, we were talking about this offline? Like, do I need to actually do block here, or the framework like natively can support that? Like the 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 the. the it's a good question was whether a search supports or not. Uh, but there is nothing bad about doing block here actually mm -hmm. because uh, we're doing this in a in a test. Yes, a test. the rule is to not block in non-blocking environment. Let's say mm -hmm. parallel. Um, scheduler or something when you handle requests by the users. But in tests, it makes no difference whether you're blocking or maybe, I mean, you eventually will have to block because JUnit in the current implementation is a blocking framework. They're working with Project Loom to uh, implement sort of a non-blocking uh, mode um, that will be possible by Project Loom. And in Project Loom, this block would also become um, not thread blocking, but rather um, fiber blocking. Um, or light thread blocking. But anyways, in testing, there is nothing bad about using block. So if we get back to, and we just rewrote this example, good, but we cannot do the same with this one because we are using reactor client stream query take one and subscribe. What I want to demonstrate, however, is that, so first of all, I should be able to run this test. I hope that you come, at, come in to test when they are green. But let's do something fancy. Let's merge with uh, or mono error Legos A. Okay, now we're screaming. Okay. So we are screaming, and um, this screaming, or actually, let me let me think about it. Uh, take one, subscribe. Um, Actually, what? Let's delay subscription so that we won't be subscribed on this stream query, and this stream query is from future. So luckily, here you already, um, yeah, you already started doing the right thing, by the way. So 
we were halfway uh, towards uh, the correct API, by the yeah. way. Uh, so good job. Um, so we go back here and uh, we are saying that we delay subscription with some error, which means that no way this code should pass. We literally say at subscription time, we scream. Mm -hmm. If I run this test and I haven't, haven't prepared it, I mean, maybe it will pass and then I'll be like, damn it, we need to do something else as usual in our streams. But let's yeah. give it a chance. Uh, I think it will pass. And it will be a very good demonstration of what I want to show. And I want to say words of cheering to our watchers. Oh, we still have some. Yeah, it, awesome. it's not, it's not, the, thank you, it's thank not you, folks. That, uh, yeah, it's not that at all, but like folks, uh, not enough likes. We need more likes, please. If you're still watching. Uh, all right. So we failed. Uh, uh, okay. Let me subscribe it on another scheduler. What? Okay. Yeah. We're just doing something crazy, but anyways, it, it, it should fail one way or another, right? Even if we yeah. delegate it to some other scheduler. Yeah, because there's exception. Yep. Um, so let's let's give it a try. So we make it asynchronous because mono.error is synchronous and I want to make it asynchronous. I want to delay subscription to some point in time. Um... Oh, it takes a lot of time. Okay, next stream, I will help you optimize this test setup with test containers and some hacks around the reusable containers just to make it faster. Some exclusive content, by the way, but not this time. Oh, yeah, perfect. We have a green test. But I, I was under impression that it should not, right? It's a green test. Yes, and because uh, it was executed in a or like my assertions were in the wrong place. A lot of things went wrong mm -hmm. because you're using subscribe here. Okay. Subscribe returns void. Oh, okay, this is possible. It returns this is possible. But anyways, we subscribe and then we start everything. The thing is, everything is asynchronous in background. And uh, our test is uh, just running statements one by one. So what we are doing here is we are saying, hey, just run this thing asynchronously, and I'm done. So boom, we are reaching this fancy curly bracket, yeah. and we exit. And then despite the green status, because assertions passed because there were none, um, we also see this callback not implemented, scheduled working group, may on time, blah, 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 uh, some errors. Um, so this is why in this case, it's not like you should or not use block. You must use block or uh, some other thing to perform the assertions so that you wait for the result of stream query before you continue. Mm -hmm. And um, actually, what I would recommend instead of using take one at subscribe, that's the old code that we had, we can just use block first row we remove this one and we even have less indentation yay that's important i love of uh, course indentation. always always um so now if you run this code we'll get an error because we scream and um i'm already running it so uh we should get the screaming result Let's call it like this because we need to find some you know, fancy words that we can use later. So we're using the screaming result here. And um, after we remove it, and if we rerun the same test, we should get the green result because we no longer scream. And it starts some containers, right? Yeah, a lot of them. And I was like, it's, it's a famous joke about YAML, but uh, we can change it to Hey, what's the future development would look like? Oh, I see containers, a lot of them. <laughs> so yeah, now it's failing. We are screaming. Great. 
and rerun the same. Hope that it will pass because, well, you wrote this test and it has some cheese. So it should pass. Potentially. I believe so. Well, I trust your thing skills. Yeah, I'm trying to. I don't trust. I don't trust this. Uh, you know, this guy that will be touching this code tomorrow. Meaning that myself, or I don't trust like the guy from the from the past. So that's why I'm trying to either make sure that when I do commit uh, my code, at least compiling and the tests are green, uh, because otherwise there's no way for me to say. Uh, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> And you see, apparently yeah. the test didn't work. Just subscribe was executed later, so you never asserted the result. And uh, was shipment ID and cheese and shipment timestamp. Cool. Yes, so cool. this is why it's important. Like, who be testing the test, right? Yes. Like, it was green. Oh, Synchronous. yeah. Synchronous. Yeah. yeah, it was it's, green. It's, it's Volkswagen style test. Just make it asynchronous. Run it on background. It will be failing, so nobody would say that your test is not failing. Just the test report is uh, like is green because yes. the nature is green. And and this, the joke is 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 double funny for for, for yes. me because you're in Germany, right? Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Okay. So with cool. that. I think I think uh, this is uh, that's uh, that's something cool that I personally learned today. I learned a lot of cool uh, cool uh, cool tricks today. I uh, will try to work uh, around this, uh, improving my um, reactor um, uh, reactor kung fu, right? Uh, my reactor fu. Um, hmm. And uh, I would appreciate if uh, you know you somehow like help me to continue to do this hopefully next time we will also look on something uh, also cool exciting uh, within uh, next week i will try to come up with some cool stuff that we can break down together in this uh, live stream next week um so huge 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 respect to our regulars who hang out um people if you watch this in uh, recording i hope you're also enjoying this uh let us know in the comments in uh, these youtube videos or um if you see this um uh the the, the footer where you can find our twitters uh mine and sergey uh, they are conveniently placed on you know any any point of this video so you will be able to reach out and ask a question or maybe provide some suggestion or at least scream at us you know the people just like screaming something <laughs> in disagreement right um uh, uh, always we're looking uh, for um i don't know, questions right from community if you want us to break down some interesting uh point and we will we can come up with some um interesting use case otherwise um we will i will be asking stupid questions so you will try to answer those or like vice versa we will and making about... stupid jokes yay that's that's why we're here so um yeah. well i'm going once i'm going twice i go in three times and that's it for today thank you for being a part of live streams and as always have a nice day Thank you. Bye-bye. And now, streams go.